Chiefs Keegan, welcome back to All Cheat Up. We're back with another podcast before that ass. And today we're doing a Chiefs seven-round mock draft, Steve. Let's get into it. Appreciate you guys for being here. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Help this channel grow. Mike, let's get this thing kicking, my man. Let's get it going. I'm horned up to do this mock draft, Steve. I'm ready to roll. All right, let's roll. I'm getting it started right now. Let's go. This is PFF, everybody, ladies and gentlemen. So PFF rankings, not the biggest with PFF rankings. We'll have that beef when it comes. Uh, But Steve, here we go, baby. We're picking number 32, and it looks like Tyler Guyton, Tyler Nubbin. So a couple Tylers just come off the board. Tyler, Tyler, Tyler. Hey, there's some intriguing picks here, though. Is there another Tyler on the board for us to take, Steve? (laughs) I don't see one, but there are some intriguing picks, Mike. I'll just throw it right out there. We don't even have to talk about the J.J. McCarthy's and all of them. Uh, no. Venus Rakestraw, not a fan of taking a cornerback this early. Right. Lad McConkey, he looks a little intriguing to me. I do I like, like what Lad, Lad McConkey. McConkey does. Uh, I think he's a solid wide receiver. I think he's very fast. He's a smart route runner. He reminds me a lot of Cooper Cup. Right. And that would be a monster thing to have in KC. Other than him, the guys that are sticking out to me early, Mike, uh, you know I'm a Keon Coleman fan. Right. I don't. I don't think Adonai Mitchell is is for me at this juncture in the draft. Steve, you're not a big AD fan, huh? Uh, I I I think he's a good receiver, but if I was going with a Texas receiver, I'd wait and take Worthy, in my opinion. And then TJ Tampa, the cornerback uh, there, I like him. Um, Steve, you, you pick it. I'll give you the first pick. You can have it. I think we should please the people. We should give I them the, the wide receiver. Look, man, I, I think I want to take Keon Coleman here because that's my favorite. Okay. But, but Lad doesn't fall this far very often. I think Lad could squeeze into the back end of the first round. I really do. But I personally think he's a day two pick. But at the same time, there is so much potential there that if he does get into round one, I would not be surprised. And I think he's a guy that will step in and play so well that we'll say we'll be looking back at the draft and being like, how in the world did Lad McConkey get to round two? Well, still, like, let's take him here. So we'll take, take him Lad in round McConkey. one just for the sake of fun yeah, I, I really and thought that he was going to be like Irish or something, but he's not. He's from Georgia, for real. Hello, Lad McConkey. <laughs> you also thought he was going to be three foot tall and redheaded and carrying around a pot of gold. That right. did not happen, Steve. Um, Looking at the board, man, we need some defensive help on the line. So the Chris Jenkins kind of a uh, kind of intriguing pick. His dad right. was was also an NFL player. Uh, Chris Jenkins likes anime too. Does that help or hurt his cause? Steve? Uh, I don't know. I think it hurts. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, so defensive inside, inside like the interior, yeah, interior or the edge, like either one is going to be something the Chiefs will be looking at. We already. Took care of the wide receiver thing, so Tez Walker and all of them, we're going to throw yep. them out. Xavier Leggett, I Wilson. see him on the board. Right, but we're not worried about them. we got Lad McConkey. So what are you looking at here? Do you want to go defensive line, or do you want to look at a tackle here? Because a lot of people like this guy from Yale, and I've seen a lot of people that like Blake Fisher from Notre Dame. What do you think on that? Right. They're both solid. I don't know if they're day two picks. Um, I really like the Malachi Corley pick here, but we're not going to double dip that. I really like... Brandon Dorless, the one you just passed up from Oregon. I think he is a Swiss Army knife of the defense. I think he can play interior. I think he can play outside at a five technique. He may be able to play a seven technique. I think he goes up and down the line. He's not fully a Chris Jones kind of guy, but he's in the vein of Chris Jones, and so I like the pick here. All right, well, I'm taking him, Mike, so tell us why that you like him. Uh, I think he's versatile. I think he's he's quick off the ball. They had him play some inside. They had him kicked out to the, to the outside. He produces... Uh, pretty well on both of them. I don't think there's a problem with Brandon Dorless. I like his athleticism. I think he tests well, depending on what he does as his pro day. I think it's very solid that he will be around two pick and at worst a day three pick, but we're picking so late at the end of day two. That's basically a day three pick. Absolutely. So, so far what we've accomplished here is getting a wide receiver and a defensive interior player, both both big needs for the Chiefs, right? Well, so interior and outside, he can play all of the offense or defensive right, line, which, which is what I Spags mean, that's, loves. That's what Spags likes. So so far, man, this draft's going pretty freaking well for us. So let's just keep on digging, baby. Hey guys, if you didn't know by now, we partnered up with our friends over at Foco. We're bringing you all kinds of Chiefs merchandise. Use our code CHIEFEDUP10 and get your Super Bowl champions back-to-back merchandise. We've got bobbleheads with Mahomes, Kelsey, Chris Jones. We even got Casey Wolf. We've got plenty of others over there. You can go check them out. Plus, they sell tumblers. They sell gnomes. They sell wrist wristbands, Steve. Look at that one. But yeah, they've got everything. Check the description. Hit up our link. Let them know All Chiefed Up sent you. And grab yourself something commemorative 
from Foco. Let's see what we got here. In the round three, it's looking like Jalen Wright's at the top of the board. He just ran very well at the uh, he just combine, choked off a four three eight, I believe, or four three six. It was <laughs> it was way up there, man. That's nice. That's nice. Uh, we also got uh, we got the Utah uh, safety here, Sione Vaki. Sione Vaki. Uh, we got Michael Hall Jr. Bucky Irving still on the board. I'm loving him at halfback. I like it's funny because my favorite two halfbacks of this draft are probably Bucky Irving, Ray yeah, Davis. Yeah, they're putting a lot of halfbacks here in the top 100. I just don't think halfbacks a premium like that. Do you? I don't either. I think there's enough of the guys out there. Michael Hall Jr. Love him uh, at defensive tackle. He's more of an undersized guy, more in the vein of like uh, Kalijah Cansey was last season. But he's he's a weapon. He's a force. Right. He can get after the passer. But we also so, just drafted Doorless. So right. So what are we thinking here, Mike? I, I, it's too early for halfback. It really is. I think you look at um, another big inside defensive run stopper kind of guy. I think uh, I like Dominic Pooney right there. That would be a tackle guard swing. We're not going to have Allegretti back. I honestly like the Pooney pick right here if that's what they're going to do. I also like Leonard Taylor right there. I think round three is a good spot for Leonard Taylor. Uh, he's a big run stuffer and a guy that can get after the QB there, another defensive player. But I would Absolutely. probably go Dominic Pooney here. Uh, I'm sure we got some Kansas Jayhawk fans that watch. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I agree with the Dominic Pooney pick. I think that the Chiefs are going to need offensive line depth. You got Allegretti that's right. going to probably be out the door because he, by all means, he's a starter in this league. Yeah. Allegretti was an absolute monster. He said in the he playoffs. wants to go somewhere, Steve, where he gets a chance to start. And I think he's earned it. We can't ask him to keep just He's definitely here. earned it. And then our boy, Darian Kennard, he obviously went on to Philadelphia to see if he could actually get right. some playing time there because we hadn't utilized him yet. So we're going to need depth at the offensive line position. And Dominic Pooney, I think would be an excellent right. pick in the third round to, to do that. He would definitely do the job. So here we are in the fourth round, Mike. We got a uh, Ben Sennett. I took him in one of my earlier mock drafts at right. tight end. I, I like do Ben like Sennett. Him. He actually done well at the combine as well. Yeah, he's a great receiving uh, tight end in the vein of Kelsey. I mean, obviously he's not on that level, but that's the type of guy that he is, uh, even a similar size and build. So I do like that pick. Right. Uh, if we're if we're gonna start looking, uh, maybe stay on the defensive theme, uh, because you were, we already got the interior player. Why, why don't we maybe look at the edge. edges here? Yeah, maybe an edge here. Let's look at edge really quickly. Um, but I do think tight end is in play right here. We've not taken a tight end yet. I'm sure Theo Johnson would be off the board. He's probably more of the round two pick. Um, Grayson Murphy's not bad. Xavier, I, if it, if I took any of these, it'd probably be Grayson Murphy from UCLA. Although I'm not super impressed with him, to be honest. Yeah, I don't I'm think he's sold sets on the a, edge. I'm not sold on a uh, defensive edge or an edge rusher right here because right. I don't like what the value is on the board. So let's take a look at tight ends. You still got Ben Sennett. You got Dallin Holker. Theo Johnson's on the board. You let's take go ahead Theo. And take Theo, thousand percent. Theo is a round two pick. I think he just run a perfect like a perfect combine. He has an RAS score of, it almost touched 10. It almost touched 10. They moved it down to like a 9.9. He's the number one tight end to ever test all the way over thousands of tight ends. He has the best testing numbers. The dude is quick. He's agile. Now the production at Penn state wasn't great. He only had like 400 receiving yards, but he had seven touchdowns, which means in the red zone, he is a threat. And I think if you get him under an Andy Reid offense, they'll find a way to use that big guy. And with him and Travis Kelsey, that could be a lethal combo. I love the Theo, the Theo Johnson pick, Steve. Absolutely. So in my earlier mock draft, I did take Ben Sennett over him. Uh, and I, my reasoning was he was more of the pass-catching Travis Kelsey type guy. But after hearing his athletic ability and seeing what right. he's been able to do at the Combine, I think that he might be the way to go if and that's the And the Chiefs the have case. interviewed him. They have interviewed him, formal interview. Absolutely, and that always goes a long way in figuring out who the Chiefs are going to take in the draft. So I see uh, a player right here, Steve. We're doing it. We're doing it. Let's do it. Isaac Boom. Garendo. This kid right now, Isaac Garendo, just finished up his combine number, Steve. He's 220-plus, and he run a 4-3-3-40. He had a 41.5-inch vertical. This dude is 220 pounds. He is Insane. a freak athlete out of U of L. He played, I want to say he played in Wisconsin before he went to U of L. He transferred. This kid can flat out play. That would be just a freak athlete to give Andy Reid and them in the backfield and to help take a little heat off Pacheco. I like the pick. I think it's a little too early, but hey, we like athletic freaks in KC and we like Dude, testers. I mean, if you have a running back that's 220 pounds and running a 4 3. 
That's something that's going to Insane. perk the ears up of Brett Veach and Andy Reid. Their little antennas went crazy at that point, right? Right. Uh, These guys are a home, It's a hometown guy for us, Mike. He's just up the road here. So right. uh, it was cool to see him be able to do what he did in the combine and really increase his stock. And I think an athletic freak like that is always on the menu for Andy Reid. So it's going to be Man, athletic he's freaks tough. and cheeseburgers, baby. Yeah. That's what he's all about. Hey, he can tote the rock. He can tote the cheeseburger to Andy. <laughs> I like it. Well, let's get back at it, man. We have three more picks here in the draft. We're at 172 now. Now we've kind of addressed a couple skill positions with the wide receiver right, and, and the running back. I we wouldn't also be opposed, hit- Steve, to double dip in a wide receiver since Lad McConkey is more of a straight slot guy. Like if you want to look at your ex, if you've got somebody there, I would be, wouldn't be opposed. I also think offensive line, defensive line could still be a pick, right. possibly a linebacker. If we can't get back Drew Tranquil and we lose Willie Gay, and then always uh, Brett Veach are looking at secondary at this point in the draft. Right. Well, I'm looking at wide receivers here, and there's no one on the board that I feel like we would have to take in this round. The, uh, who's available? I do like Joshua Cephas from UTSA. I think that he's kind of a sleeper guy that could be a, a good weapon in the league. Right. Uh, maybe not, not. Maybe nothing crazy. I don't expect him to bust out like Puka Nakua or anything. Right. But I feel like Joseph Cephas or Josh Cephas, sorry, could be a, a good piece for an NFL team. And uh, the thing about it is, Mike, we don't need to take him here. I think he's going to be available later. Okay. So let's let's get off of the wide receivers for now, and let's start looking back. At let's see, did we ever take our edge rusher? We haven't taken an edge yet, so you can look there. Let's do that. Let's see who's available at edge, and we'll go from there. Uh, it looks like Brennan Jackson's available, Jalen Harrell, Solomon Bird, which is someone else I like, but I did take him in another draft, so it's whatever. Colin uh, Duke, the, Colin the edge Duke. out of K State, he he tests a little slow for what I like. So, right. and then we got our hometown guy JJ Weaver as well. But Colin Duke, man, I think we've you think we've hit our max on. Kansas K-State, State Edge rushers, rushers for a couple years. Possibly. Right? Uh, I think the name that stuck out to me right there was Cedric Johnson from Miss- Mississippi. Uh, he's been a starter now for a couple years, and he actually produced pretty well. Now, is he going to be a guy that goes a little earlier than this? No. I think this is about the wheelhouse for Cedric Johnson. Is he a guy that could fit in this uh, system flawlessly? That remains to be seen. Absolutely. So just kind of scanning it, scanning it here, making sure we're not missing anybody that we should be. Um, I see some good names. We already took care of halfback, so Cody Schrader's out the door. Uh, you said, was it Jordan Jefferson that Jordan you said Jefferson. you liked from LSU? Yeah, he 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 did pretty solid, I want to say, at the Shrine Bowl or the Senior Bowl one. I think it was the Shrine. Uh, but he actually played enough that we went back and looked. I love Roger Rosengarten. Again, Absolutely, PFF baby. has him ranked too low. Roger Rosengarten, Steve, if you just watch the national championship game, you say he sucks, but you can't just watch one game. He's the reason Michael Penix done so well there and why Roma Dunze put up all the numbers. <laughs> Rosengarten is a great swing tackle. He can play the left tackle. He can play the right, and I believe he'll be a second-round pick he, at worst. Maybe he's not going to be on the board, but he was on the board, so I couldn't help myself. I had hey, to click it. I had PFF's to click it. loss is our game, baby. Mike, if we got Dominic Pooney and Rosengarten in this draft, you couldn't be mad at that. No, I would uh, go ahead and let's just let's celebrate. I'll have another celebration uh, <laughs> for just those two picks. But Steve, I think we got to address some defensive line here or some secondary. We've only got two picks left, and again, I would still be uh, open to maybe getting a taller X wide receiver if you could. But the way we we drafted Lad here, uh, we're saying that the Chiefs may have taken care of the X position in free agency. That's a possibility. So you you could think the Chiefs could either. You know, take care of the exposition in free agency, which is what we've talked about. What if they were to go out and try to spend big on a, uh, another guy? Right. Or do you think if you get Lad McConkey in there, maybe Rasheed Rice plays out of the slot less, and you got you got Lad McConkey uh, in the slot? So I mean, there's ways to move that around. So I don't think it's necessary to double dip at wide receiver. I think it, it would be a luxury. Like if someone falls. That, that should be a lot higher, and hey, it's great value. Let's go ahead and double dip. But I don't think that we have to double dip here. Right. Uh, Steve, I, I was just looking. Lad McConkey actually just ran a 4-4 flat. Let's go, at the baby. Combine. I thought he was going to be able to get into the 4-3s. I really did, but four, he didn't. 4-4, four, 4-3-8s, four, no Do you know who bro. did get into the 4-3s, Steve? Xavier Leggett ran a 4-3-9, but the fastest one Let's of go. everybody was not Xavier Worthy. So far, I don't think Xavier Worthy's ran just yet, 
but his Texas counterpart, A.D. Mitchell, has put up an official 4-3-4. Oh. A.D. Mitchell has written a 4-3-4. Well, I guess I have to throw my, my preconceived notions about Adonai Mitchell out. Dude, A.D. Mitchell has now locked himself in as a round one pick, I believe, Dang, at a 4-3-4. Son. Uh, I'm re- I'm very interested to see what Worthy does. He's claiming that he might be able to run a four two two, so we'll hey. we'll see what happens there. Uh, I mean, he is faster than Mitchell on tape by far, so he might not be right. Lying. He may do it. He may. Dude, Texas has had a heck of a uh, a group of guys coming out. They are doing what Georgia usually does. Absolutely, man. Uh, I'm also interested in Keon Coleman. I think if that kid can can run. Very fa- if he could put up the, even a towards a four four flat like Lad McConkey, he's going to be earlier pick, I right? Because he's got all the tools. Has he ran yet? No, he has not. He's not ran. Uh, oh, Keon Coleman has ran. He has knocked himself completely out of the first round. He has Ooh. ran a four six, which is exactly my knock on Keon Coleman. He could not but that's separate. A, see, that makes me like him, right? Because you know why? Because all the good receivers never run the low the low forties, right? Jerry Four. Rice. We talked about Jerry Rice. He's a four six guy. We, right. we talked about um, who else was it? AJ Brown. I don't think ran a very good forty time. There's lots of really good guys in the league that did not run a good forty. So it doesn't hurt me on him. It but doesn't. You're right. This could make him fall, and that could be a target for the Chiefs because. Now now you got first round right. talent who didn't run necessarily as fast as he should have in the combine falling down into the second round. So maybe keep your that eyes could be, on Keon Coleman. Right. The Chiefs and Brett Veach could come up in the second round and maybe take a Keon Coleman. I don't think he gets to us in the second round where we sit. You would have to come up. But I do think you could maybe take him at 32 and I'd be fine with it. Uh, I think he would now fall to 32. I He's going to have to have a heck of a pro day. He may run at his pro day and up that 4-6. There may be something Probably. wrong with that. But the one other player that I kind of wanted to shout out was Troy Franklin. Everybody loves him. He actually ran a 4-4-1. So he's actually behind right now five other players. Xavier Leggett, Anthony Gold from Oregon State, Lad McConkey from Georgia, Jacob Cowling from Arizona, and, of course, A.D. Mitchell at that 4-3-4. So. Absolutely. Hey, we have to get off the combine, baby. That's a video for back. a whole Let's different day, Let's baby. knock these last Let's two picks out. Let's get back to this. Let's get back to this two picks. Uh, we're at pick 210 now, Mike. Um, seeing what's on the board, I think we should just start play, like taking best value that we see. Right. Uh, so we just have two more picks here. So what are you seeing here? Anybody sticking off the, you know, jumping off the page at you? Who would you be taking at this juncture at 210? Right. I see Frank Gore Jr. We already assessed uh, right. the, the I do like position. Frank Gore Jr., but we already took care of that. Right. Um, I would keep scrolling. I'm not seeing anybody that I absolutely love right here, um, but we do know how PFF ranks. So you may end up scrolling across somebody that is a rough down here. Yeah. You may scroll across a round one talent here pretty soon. (laughs) Who knows? Um, Keep scrolling, baby. Keep scrolling. Curtis Jacobs. I love Curtis Jacobs. He's a nice, fast linebacker out of Penn State. He ran about a four, five, five, four, five, six, somewhere in that range. Maybe a four, six, but he's right in that. That, Can we take two as a brother? Can we take two as a brother? You could take two as brother as a backup. I don't think he's got as strong an <laughs> arm as Tua, which is saying something. Uh, Trevin Wallace, linebacker right there, is never going to be there, and Evan Anderson. So if you want to just take any of those two right there, I will gladly accept the big nose tackle from Florida Atlantic. Oh. Dude, this kid's almost 330 I think, pounds. Uh, yeah, I think reinforcing that defensive line is going to be a You get your thing, naughty type you know? player so, right here, right? Absolutely. So we go ahead and knock that out. Let's see what's available for us at the last pick here at 250. And then we'll see what PFF's going to grade our draft like. They're going to they're gonna tear us up because they think that the only – look, they say the only thing we need is wide receiver and defensive line. So they're wanting us to take more wide receiver and defensive line. I don't know. I feel like we've done pretty well this draft. Trevor so we'll Wallace is to not going to be what here about in the Kenny Logan round, Jr. Guys? at safety? You want to you take him here and end this thing? Take whoever you want. I don't care. Uh, Jordan think, McGee uh, at linebacker would be a yeah, heck of a pick. That's what I was getting ready to say. You you were talking about Jaden Cremetti out of D, out of Mississippi State looks like Chris Jones. He oh, really? looks just like Chris Jones. Uh, he actually has a wingspan. Idufon Olafoshio from linebacker from Washington is incredible. These guys are not going to be here in the seventh round. PFF has to update these, Steve. They got to get have it to together. Update them. So right, just so take you whoever take you want. No, you got to pick it. Um, I want to take the linebacker here then. Let's go up and let's take the linebacker. Um, McGee? Jordan McGee? I like Jordan McGee. He's a little Me small. Too. Trevin Wallace I like too. Is he still on the board from UK? Uh, a hometown kid. But uh, you can go ahead and just take whoever you see on the board. 
Okay, we're taking Trevin. Trevin Wallace. I like Trevin Wallace. I think he's good. He ran a four five flat at the combine. He's fast. He can get after the quarterback. He can blitz. He can do everything Willie Gay can do. This is a perfect Willie Gay replacement if you lose Willie Gay. Absolutely. Tell us about it, Mike. Who's your favorite uh, pick of this draft? The my favorite pick of the draft probably where we got him was Theo Johnson. Then we grab him in the third round. I don't think he'll be there in the third round. He is obviously he may have worked himself into the mid second. We may not even be able to get him in the second round. But I like Theo Johnson and I actually like Lad McConkey. Uh, he did run a four four. He can run out of the slot a lot. Maybe he gives you what we did not get out of Sky Moore. Absolutely, man. I'm thinking I'm really liking the Lad McConkey pick. I, I do think that. He's getting overlooked a little bit. I feel like he falls into that Cooper Cup type receiver that's just going to be able to plug and play in the NFL. I feel like he's going to be very effective yeah. early. He runs smooth so, routes. He's, he's a good player. Yeah, absolutely. So that's one of my favorite picks, but I feel like we got some good ones. Let's check out these scores, baby. They gave us an A for Lad McConkie. Uh, Brandon Dorless in the second round was just a C plus. Uh, Dominic Pooney, a C minus in the third round, which... Theo Man, Johnson, these, a D plus. As these a grades round four are amazing, pick. baby. Look at these. Look, I'm going to tell you right now, PFF. People argue PFF when it comes to PFF rankings. Their draft is worse than their rankings they ever thought about being. <laughs> Absolutely, like their draft rankings are way worse than like how good they're saying a player is. But overall, Mike, Lad McConkey, Brandon Dorless, Dominic Pooney, Theo Johnson, Isaac Garendo, Roger Rosengarten, Evan Anderson, Trevin Wallace. I would take this draft. They're still ranking it a B minus, even the though Chief, they had some this low scores is on an there. A plus 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 draft. The fact that you could get Dominic Pooney, who is a second round pick in the third. Theo Johnson is a second round pick and you grabbed him in the fourth. You picked up a 220 plus pound running back that just ran a 41 and a half inch vertical and ran a 4-3-3. Roger Rosengarten is going to be a second round pick Steve Evan Anderson out of Florida Atlantic is the premier drain plugger that kid will not last past round four at the latest and Trevin Wallace is a day day three pick maybe early round three uh Trevin Wallace can do everything Willie Gay can do he's fast he can cover this is a horrible display by PFF if anybody uses PFF to do mock drafts beware if you're getting good grades because that was a great draft and it did not get a good grade Steve so I'm a little sus on them it gave us a B minus though which is more than I thought when I looked at the individual player grades right so but I still I think this is an easy A minus to A draft it's an like, A plus draft is A it, plus plus you got the draft. A plus 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 in my opinion, there's no way. We got too much value. Theo Johnson, the highest rating RAS score of any tight end ever, and you got him in round no, four. You convinced That's me. We, we just had an A-plus draft, baby. It's right here plus, at All Chiefed Up. Plus. Listen to All Chiefed Up. Listen to what we have to say. These are the guys that the Chiefs need to go after. Mike, do you have anything left to say to these guys today before we jet out of here? I don't. We'll be back with a lot more uh, draft content, a lot more combine content. Going to wrap that up pretty soon. But yeah, that's all I got for him, Steve. Uh, thanks for subscribing and hitting that bell. Go Chiefs, baby. I, I, I